Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest release, the limited release from Still Austin. This is their Cast Strength Bourbon Whiskey. Now last year uh, they released The Musician and that one was bottled at 98.4 proof. That one retailed for about $40 and that was a really nice little bourbon. I still see it on shelves so that there's no shortage of that one. This one uh, the limited cast strength bottle just dropped very recently here in Texas. Um, it's bottled at 118 proof. Retail pricing on it is supposed to be about $60, $65. I say that because I think Total Wine and Specs here in Texas kind of got into a little competition where they were going to basically undercut each other. And I saw this one on shelves for about $45 to $50 right there, which is below what it's supposed to be. But I think they were just taking the hit just to try to get people in their stores to buy other stuff. But that's what they did. Now, when you read the back of the label, it says that every bit of this whiskey was distilled there in Austin. It talks about it was aged at least two years old. It talks about Nancy the Nose Fraley, how she went through their warehouse and kind of picked out the single barrels to go into this composition and so we're going to go ahead and give it a nosing and tasting and see what we think about it all right here we go on the nose wow okay it's a little intense but it is nice it's there's a lot of oak cinnamon is bumping cherries a little bit of a little bit of a baked or really ripe apple gold and let's go with golden apple on this one not red apple cinnamon is definitely there the clove is a little bit in there as well it's knocking underneath the cinnamon there's a nuttiness to it almost like almonds lightly toasted almonds nice sourness i like the sourness component you know i'm very familiar because i'm doing the saint sally bourbon that's coming out very soon i'm very familiar with um mgp and aged mgp and this has some of that characteristic going on with the sourness that turns into a polished tone almost like a mahogany type essence this definitely has that so I'm thinking more in this case, it's almost like a sour cherry, sour plum, mahogany, a little furniture oil. The cherry is natural. It is popping. It is brighter than all the other fruits. There is a citrus aspect to it as well, though. I think orange zest here. And that, that cinnamon keeps popping me. It keeps knocking me out of the glass a little bit, but... A little cocoa. What is that? Reset the nose here. Yeah. Oh, it's the oak. It's almost like a little barrel char aspect going on as well. A little bit of a um, star anise in here. Overall, pretty nice little solid nose. You know, a lot of people like to talk about Texas whiskeys and Texas bourbon and how they're nothing like Kentucky bourbons. And, and I get that. And we are definitely in a different climate zone here. And we uh, see different conditions for our, our grain and so on. So I expect there to always be differences. And in this one, um, it's definitely easing away from the grain note that can sometimes be a little dominant in Texas bourbon. The caramel is intensified. There still is a little hint of a banana chip going on here. But it's very light and it's actually below the cherry and the apple component. Alright, let's go ahead and give it a taste.
medium viscosity. Hmm. I don't want to say anything just yet. Let me take the second sip. Yeah, medium viscosity. Wow. It's intense. And it's... Mm, okay. So as it enters and as it hits, it hits very boldly. Right away, hits you with uh, kind of like that sour cherry, that apple, baked apple type component. It hits that right up front. Lots of caramel up front as well. Slightly salted caramel. Then you start picking up this big oak right behind it early. That oak component really kind of rounds out on the mid palate where you're starting to see that cinnamon kind of bulge a little bit and it does get a little prickly there on the mid palate but eases off pretty quick as you start rolling over on the back end that nuttiness that I was talking about the almonds is in there but I think it's joined with a majority of walnuts black walnuts because the combination of the oak and that walnut characteristic is kind of making it feel a little bit touch dry and a little touch bitter on that back end as it rolls off. I actually find the citrus creeping up just as you're hitting that mid palate is where you're going to get those little um, orange oils essence spritzed on top and it may be, let me see, double check. The oak that hits also is a touch new. So, you know, sometimes you get these old, mature bourbons, you know, and of course you get that rich, heavy, dense oak resin. On the newer bourbons, like this one's so young, the oak can feel almost like a, a freshly cut piece of lumber. And that's kind of what I pick up on the oak here. The vanilla isn't, I don't think the vanilla's had enough time to get really rich, but it does have enough caramel sweetness to kind of carry it over the hump of the spice swell on the mid palate. The walnuts, the almonds, the, um, the cocoa powder is dusted on the back end as well. I like it. I don't... I, I like the complexity of the cocoa. I don't need it drying out anymore on the back end, to be honest. And cocoa will tend to do that. The oak is, of course, still rolling as well. You know, let me take a little rinse here. I'm going to take a rinse because I want to see what's going to happen if I add just a touch of water. And I normally don't do this, but we're going to do it today. Just a little dollop. That was about, I guess, enough dropper. That would have been three to four drops. Of course, you always have to give it time. Once you add the water, it's going to start releasing. The first thing is the oak and the cinnamon. It's going to make those intensify. So you kind of have to give it a... A few seconds to a minute or so to help it kind of relax and so we'll give it a little swirl here blow that glass out oh there we go wow yeah fruits really pop now the cherries are jumping out of the glass a lot more with the addition of the water oak is still there the nuttiness is now joined by a little hint of a peanut shell Peanut shells, a little almonds, a little walnut. Apples are still in there, but they're feeling baked. Caramel still about the same amount. A little hint of that star anise is in there with the clove on the spices. And that orange zest is still in there. The orange oil is still going. I think that might have jumped up a little bit with the water addition as well. Yeah, that sourness, that little bit of that polish is in there. I like that. That's nice. It's almost like an apple cider vinegar when you start getting into the polish tone. It starts turning into furniture polish. It runs this line as it's developing. Sometimes it'll come off like apple cider. And that gives that little twinge of that sourness that I'm picking up. Hmm. That's where this whiskey shines, is with water. Straight up, a little drying, a little out of balance. 
you add just a touch of water it really kind of helps it ride a little over that hump just a little further does it still get a little dry because yes there is all that cocoa there is all that walnut and that oak the lumber still kind of on that back end drying things out yeah it's almost feeling like almost with the citrus it's almost feeling like a grapefruit pith as well on that back end is that there yes but now with the water we're getting just enough of the savoriness to kind of carry it through the whole way overall I think that's how I enjoy it the most if you're looking for I don't know um, you know they they taste very MGP like to me right now does it is this better yes I think this is better than a two-year-old MGP um, it has more complexity in it and the finish goes a little longer and the ride is a little better two-year-old MGP is just kind of flat singular once they start getting four to six years old now we're starting to develop those deeper characteristics like I talk about mahogany and all that polish this one seems like it's getting there at only two years of age it's already getting to where a four-year-old MGP is uh, but anyway I hope you enjoyed this video review thank you as always for being here of course if you want to get this re review two weeks early join me at patreon.com slash liquorhound become a patron supporter of mine you help me purchase these bottles so you know you're getting honest and unbiased opinions from me all the time uh, but keep leaving all those great comments i greatly appreciate them and i will get back to them just as soon as i can everyone have a great day and cheers